Okay. So when I get a quality video that I want from the small sensor. So there's two different styles of look depending on the sensor size that you go for. The reason why you get full frame is so that when you utilize full frame lenses, you get more of that, that cinematic look of having like a softer separation from your subject to the back. Is that not right. That's a cinematic look. Yeah. Right. That's so cool. Now when you go to smaller sensors, whether it be smaller than the back, you're compressing yeah. as you look you. So you're now making it seem like everything is in the same plane and field. Right. I'm so, so yeah. So that's why like they're with one inch sensors or 2.3 inch sensors. These guys, these are APS-C and full frame. So either way, on an APS-C and full frame, you're going to get more of a cinematic look because you're using lenses that also have wider apertures as well. Uh, yeah. It's a little bit bigger. It's a little bit bigger than that guy. So that's their 10. So it's a little bit bigger than that guy. It's in between the size of this camera and like, R10. This is a, it's in manual focus mode. So, so how do you size. like change it back to auto I wish focus? We had it on so it with this system here, we go to the very for all this is the R8. Okay. Everything so it's a little bit manual focus mode here. Uh, it's not in, <laughs> sorry, just I think someone just do a weird settings. Potentially, yeah, they've probably gone through this system a little bit, but let me just find out easy to fix. Spot of focus, let's go to the top right here. Oh, here is it. Yep. Got it. Bum, bum, bum. Now, you, if you wanted to, you could actually have that be a quick menu item here. Mm -hmm. you have the biggest, I think we can also customize the function over here. I think. Also, yeah. So, yeah. of course, you do your subject as you see fit. Anything else. But you are in a, you are in a video mode, so some of those features on that particular screen do change mm -hmm. versus having it on photo mode where you might see a bit of a different menu system. I can have ISO here, I can have okay, thanks. Position, I can have white balance, Kelvin temperature, I have a lot of options. This lens allows you to switch from this ring between your focus and having your control. That's why it's different. The chief is The king cost. That's a really good compact travel lens. That's one of the reasons why I like to lens. So, so, if you're going, it's a full frame. Yeah, so the body only is about twenty five ninety nine. R seven is. No, 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 R seven. R fifty. The size then, chip size. Oh, so. You got one of them with the chip size. Oh well. With the chip size. Yeah. The R seven is also an APS-C. It's the same size. So, the 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 R seven had the exact same size sensors as the L four. So this is a full frame, this is an APS-C. APS-C starts at $679 for the lowest model, then it goes into $900, then it goes into $1,500. So the $1,500 is for the R7. Yes, this does not have the stabilization. The lens for the R7, can I get that lens type? So if you get the body only, there's a lens that also comes so I'm a little tired, so I can uh, So the R7, you can get it as a body only, or you can get it in a kit bundle with a lens called the 18 to 150. So that's also an extended zoom range, but it's designed for an APS-C sensor. So it would give you an equivalent focal length of something like this, really more like a 24 to 105. That's what that lens will give you, an equivalency for an APS-C sensor around that lens. I would say so. If you want a good all around encompassing focal length. Or should I get the body <laughs> and buy, get the lens? That, do you have a lens that size that goes with that? Uh, well, all of these can work mount good on for that you? lens. Yeah, pretty it's good. It's just a matter of choosing which little one camera. to need yeah. for the workflow that you're going for. So I'm considering like, between uh, R8 and also R7. So like, just yeah, trying okay. out the R8. The biggest difference between the two is going to be full frame and crop sensor. Yeah, because I use the 70 Mark II in the past. Right. Still, I'm still using the 70 Mark II. So the R7 is probably going to be the closest one to that. Yeah. I mean like... 
but I haven't tried. I haven't tried pork rings before, so maybe like give it a try. So if you do anything that's wider angle, yeah. If you need to do anything that's wider angle, that's where a frame sensor sort of comes into its own. Yeah, actually, I uh, use tons of ultra wide angle, maybe like 11 and 12, that kind of focal length. So if I put it on here, it will be extremely wide. So I, I don't know. So a, so a 10 millimeter lens is like a 16. Yeah. Right? So we have a 16 millimeter lens. So maybe like, just like this. There you go. Yeah. So I mean, so trying it out. What, it end, what ends up happening with that is, it's just the lens is, you know, faster focusing. You're not, so you're not dealing with a small image circle, you're dealing with a much larger one. Yep. And the optics are just, you know, they're better in a, in a bigger lens like that, just in terms of not bending the light through the lens. Yep. I mean, I mean, like, if I put the 11 mil on the full frame, it will be extremely wide. Well, if you put the 11 millimeter, I mean, if you if you put it on the adapter to put it on there, the adapter is actually going to switch it to knowing that it's one of the smaller censored lenses. No, it's a full frame. Because it is a full frame. Yeah, it's All right. Full frame. Well, then it'll work. Yeah. Why? Why doesn't work? Be wider still. It's not wide. You know, there's an 11 to 24 over here somewhere that, uh, you know, it's just oh, a crazy wide lens. Yeah. I tried it before, but it's just kind of heavy. It's big and heavy. Yeah. And expensive. Yeah, expensive too. Currently, right now, for a for the APS. It's one of those lenses that's kind of like the 28 to 70 F2. Yeah, it's it's sort of priced by the this pound. Right here. I don't have display, but there's this lens called the RFS 55 to 210. It's 55 wide enough for what you would need it. Okay, so this guy right here, that looks like this. This one is designed for the R7 APS-C. So this would give you 55 all the way to 210 on that R7. I don't think they sell it as a bundle with the R7. I could double check, but I think it's only the 18 150. But you could get the 18 150 for every day to get the kit, and then get this lens separately as like a second lens to use. So let's see, I don't know, like R7. For the one in the bundle, it's 18 to 150. So it gives you a little bit wider, and it's a little bit like it's a little bit more normal kind of telephoto. Like you could get at least a couple feet, you know. Ahead. But the 55 to 210 will get you a little bit more reach. So that's why it would be a good second lens to have. So let's see. For the skin and body on that lens, you see that part? Well, they don't, I don't think they make a combination with that lens and that body. Oh, you bought the 18 to 150 in that lens. Yeah, yes. Yes, yes. Typically, when you buy the kit, the bundled lens with the body, you get it for a cheaper price. That's Yeah. No. Not that, not that combination. Not that combination. Uh, no, they don't. We don't do it like that. So the 18 to 150 would give you a discount with that body because that's the one we always bundle with it. But that 55 to 210 is not bundled with a camera, so that one you have to buy full price. But at least you can save some money in buying the 18 to 150 because it gets bundled. With that. 